ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਬਾਸਾ ਜੀ ਟੁਡੇ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਥਿਸ ਵਰਕਸ਼ਾਪ ਔਨ ਦੀ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਰਿਫਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਰਾਮਕਲੀ ਦੀ ਵਾਰ ਰਾਇ ਭਗਵਾਨ ਤਥਾ ਸਤੇ ਤੋਂ ਅਖੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਕਾ ਸਭ ਬੈਰੀ ਸਿਗਨੀਫਿਕੈਂਟ ਵਾਰ ਐਂਡ by a very a learned person who most of you know is sadar ajmer singh he has written two books very important book books one on the pronunciation and the greatness of the bani and the other one is how to understand at least 10 to 15 books in one book so those books are really really good and they are uh, available if anybody wants to have it. So I will request without taking any more time to introduce Siddharth Ajmer Singh, a very devoted Sikh and a hard working person who has done a phenomenal work for the Khalsa Khan. Here he is, Siddharth Ajmer Singh, who is going to uh, talk about Trampoli Kiva. Vahe Kuti Ka Khalsa. Vahe Kuti Ka Khalsa. First of all, let me welcome you all to this workshop. This is going to have two parts. We will try to cover the first part today and the second part we will try to do it tomorrow and day after tomorrow, whatever it is, we will complete that then. So I am going to be rushing through quite a bit of slide. And if you don't understand anything or you need clarification, you can actually ask me that so that before I move, you know, so I can uh, make the point on that particular slide. Part one is, first of all, I'm going to explain what a war is really. And then I'm going to talk about giving you some background on the subject matter. Then I'm going to actually talk about a significant. Then here the blog slide will actually on concluded that we can do it all in part. So if we finish early, I got 26 slides, then I will move on to the second part. But I don't think we will be able to do that. So the first part is explanation is more like a, a short one-one course on war. And then directly I'm going to give you background in terms of what, who, when, where, and why this war was decided. And then I'm going to talk about the significance and I'll be talking in terms of social, political, historical, and spiritual part. When we look at the word war, it's, it's just like the word war, W-A-R. It means young. Or the song is directly sung by the people who have performed miraculously in the war. I looked at the Mahan Kosh, you know, what is the real meaning of war? They have 31 different meanings. On the word. And I know <coughs> even in Sri Guru Granth Sahib, some of the bodies, the war, the word appears in different contexts and it means different. Just like, you know, Sat Bar, we are talking about Ad Bar, Sumatra Bar, etc. And also in this context. But we are going to be talking about mostly in the context of war or the song of the Granth Each war has a central theme, whether it's Gurbani or it's a worldly war. So when people talk about a dweller of a person, they take a single instant and talk about the fear that has actually performed by 
some body. And both in the body as well as in the like body war, it, it is the same. Then I'm going to actually talk about a little bit about the like significance of war as it's related to the Punjabi. Why did it become popular? And since our rules were mostly, you know, from Punjab, and why did it took this particular word and called it the war in the history of the city of Let us quickly look at the map of India. I don't want you to get bogged down with this particular map. But that pink form, that is color, whatever it is, it shows the India the way it looked like during British Empire. But it was pretty much that way during Guruji's time, except the right hand side toward the east is the country Burma. And that was not part of India, but the rest of the India looked very much like that. From this chart, I just want to point out, when you look at the boundaries of India, the all of the north side, that is where the Himalaya mountains are. So it's very difficult for somebody to attack from there with ground forces and come and attack India. Especially during these, those times. Now people fly over and go bomb, etc. But then they depended on a lot of active ground forces to actually attack a big country like India. And if you look at it, most of the east side and the west side, the ocean. And the distance is too far to come within you know, the, the ships that are trying to attack India. And then there's a little part directly you know, toward the west side on top. You look at it, the country like Afghanistan, and it also bordered with Persia, they call it, but now it is called Iran. So the lower part, you know, actually like, look at like a mouth, that's mostly, you know, actually is the desert area, so it's very hard to actually get big you know, to that one. So only place was people to come in and plunder India or rule <coughs> India or conquer India was coming through the Afghanistan area and then into India. On the next chart, if you look at it, the Punjab is toward the directly northwest side with that little pinkish color in there. So everybody had to pass through Punjab to get to the rest of the India. So what was happening is for thousand, more than thousand of years. People were coming there to get the directly or to under India and they had to actually fight against the people you know, who were living in Punjab. So they were subjected to the war, the UAR war, a long time. So this means the war grown people had their views. So they had also Ballads, which are called the Iraqi songs of weather, sung in Iraqi villages and all over the place to inspire people so that they can fight against any intruder in Iraqi coming in and attacking India. In worldly war, what happened is you are looking at it is contained to countries or states or factions, etc. And the war were fought by the war with, with weapons like you know, swords, bow bows, or you know, spears and arrows, etc. So Guruji picked up the same word, you know, war. You know, if we have to describe and talk about from a spiritual point of view, the war which we are supposed to fight all the time. And everybody. The whole world, every being, all human beings have to fight this war. This is the internal war which we have to fight inside us against the voices. Calm, cruel, low, more, and God. 
can even fight against those, you have to do it on a daily basis. That's why the Prophet said, he said, Khasa so, jo kare ne tran tran, khasa so, jo kare ne te jan. So, ohi khasa hai ga, the way who rides the horse, gets ready in the morning, and he's ready to fight. And we have learned well, all the six have learned well. We get up on the early in the morning, we are good at fighting. But we don't fight with our dinner inside. We fight outside in Gurdwaras. Okay? We take out the Quran and stab somebody you know, if they are not agreeing with us. But we never pay any attention to what Guruji is saying in here, what the war stands for. On the spiritual side, Guruji was saying, I will train you to fight against these vices and I'll give you the necessary weapon such as Simran, Seva, Kirtan, Sasangal, and Prima, etc. And I tell you, this war is difficult to fight. People have conquered, conquered countries, but they could not conquer their minds or the king, you know, who was the greatest of all, Alexander the Great or anybody else. But they lost their spiritual wars. So it is more powerful than the other war, but we have to at least listen to our Guru and do these things effectively. So in the context of Gurbani, when you look at it, God created this earth. And at the same time, we created the Maya in its creation, when we created the creation. And with Maya, it's obvious, you know, if we can't go through more God, and their families, you know, like Ika, Linda, or etc., they all play in there, and they typically overcome people. And people, you know, we just do that, but spiritually they don't think about it. How can I fight the war directly against those that have been over my mind? So Guruji is also a great warrior. He provided he himself. And that's what we are going to learn over the next two days. How Guru Devi, Guru Amadasi, Guru Ramadasi, and Guru Arjun Devi directly fought these wars and how they came the status of being a guru. So Gurmak, whoever comes to the guru and listen to the guru, become a true disciple, he wins. He never loses. But the more monarchs who are self-centered, they don't win. They lose and they stay in the death and birth cycle. But the rest of their all the time, you know, until this whole thing is going to be at me again, you know, to be destroyed by Vaheguru. Until then, you know, they will keep on that game rotating in this death and birth cycle. I gave a quotation at the bottom from Mahamalati Var Mahala Pella, that is Guru Nanak Devi. When we talk about Mahala Pella, that is by, decided by Guru Nanak Devi. This was done after he had to travel to Mecca and when he came back, Babur attacked. And when he had to saw this war, after that, you know, he settled in Kutalpur. And this was the first war decided by the Guru Nanak Lathe Patu Pai Gurukh Machya Manuk Mare Kishar Murakh Katya Aap Kade Mare Aap Kare Jatya So all this directly war, whether it's a spiritual war or other war, they are all under the influence of, you know, Maya. Spiritual war actually shows us how to actually get rid of Maya, the influence. And the other one is with that, we keep on directly killing each other, you know, that's what this really means. So the Gurmukhs win and the Manus lose. There is a great 
staat bij een baie gebied hier. Maar Peet, hulle hebben zich die waar aan. En ze raken niet in die mensen waar je boek gebruikt, die hij haar boek bieden, dat bloem aan. En daar draai je spreken, dus zou ik buik leren. Dus waarom je het dus kon betrekken aan het kijken naar mensen weer? Dat is wat jou schoen. Hou een stukje waar je dat niet voor hebt. Gebiedi is happy about the mind and the being inside, how to fight against each other. Mind is under the influence of Maya in that shell. So, Kaan, Kod, Lomo, Ankar, they all have big influence on mind. Man is the king, described as the king in that one, and he became a rebellious and then he actually takes the form which is our body. But they are actually using the metaphor with a very strong four belt which has double walls and around it got three different moves. You know actually those channels of water etc. And very hard we have to conquer him. And he's under the influence of all his ministers and generals like Krog, etc. So Kubiti is saying, he even raises his hand and says, I can't fight it, I can't win against these you know, vices. Then, he had been disguised in that shop, that man, he took the shard, he came to the sanctuary of the Guru. Then all of a sudden, he was able to actually fight back and win that war. war. And he captured the Manraja, controlled it, and now he's doing whatever he The being is telling him to do that. So simply, I'm just going to say a few lines of that one, and then we'll move on. Kyo li je gar banka pahi, dober kor karte ho dhari. Panch pachis mal sakti. Ari Parvon Maya, Jan Gari Kato, or Yorna Ponte, Aha Karvon Maya. So this is where he made this attack. Then he said, Pain Prita, Sota Hawaii, Gola Gyan Chala, now Guru Gyan, and the Sota is in there, you know, is a cannon, and Guru Gyan is the cannon ball, and Pain is, Pain, everybody knows this, still not the love, but it's the Pain, which in return, love, which is expect nothing in back, you know, I from the other person. And that's the Purita that was the fuse, he used. And with one strike, he actually conquered that particular fort and moved on to actually fight with the army inside the conquerors and the new message. So it's a very good shout that relevant that was my first exposure to Gurbani and I liked it so much you know, since then. I always you know, go back and think in those styles that teach me moving forward saying that people like Kabir you know, have gone through life and how hard they have to really fight against me. So I have to do try my target you know, in order to actually control my mind. That's what you gotta do every day, every morning. Get up early in the morning and ride that horse in the cool of the second part. So now let's actually talk about Vara. Vara is the plural word for war. Because there are 22 wars in Sri Guttransar. The way Guttransar is a character the shams come in first, then Ashpadya, then shams, then Bani's of Guruji, you know, such as uh, Chitgur, Anansar, even Yajinya Vipadya. Sometimes I'm going to have to talk in Pajapi, I hope you don't mind, but if you don't understand the way you have all that we translate that in English. So, they are in each rag, that's the way they are actually put. And after that, after the war, after the Shams, Bani and war, and then comes in Pakhani Bani. 
in my simple mind, the way I think about this one, they must have a great reason that why would be a rain in that particular way. I may be wrong, there are other learned people who are sitting in here, they may or may not agree with me, but I would say my peace of mind. I kind of actually feel that all the shelf and Ashtabhya and Shant Sesava and the Bani, that's their Guruji is giving us a place. How do we fight this war against these vices? Then, you have to present the war. Taking a simple idea, put it in one particular space, and then you will talk about certain fields that some of the parts and even Guruji have to actually fight. Use those, you know, actually as a guidance. It's for us, that's the dish in our war, how we are going to live our lives. But naturally, it would be incomplete if you didn't say that. Yes, not only Guruji, but other people have used this one. And this is their testimony. And that's where the pipeline comes in and says, this is what I have done, community, non deity or anybody else. So, when you look at Sri Kukrasadi, you look at it, it is slopes and Pornia in Vars, except two Vars. One is Vasanti Vars, it has only three bodies, which is the shortest one of all of them. It has only about three bodies, and about one third of the face covered it. And then, is the second one is our subject, you know, actually Vars. The rest of the Vars have bodies and slopes associated with it. I want to point out, that's not the way it was since Guru Nanak Dev All the wars, you know, actually previously were only points. It was Guru Arjun Dev who added the slopes with those points. You actually do the Kirtan in the morning of Vasadi War. And you also have heard it, you know, on TV or whatever, you know, from other people or Gurdwara, in Gurdwara. And everybody, you know, when they talk about that war, Asadi war is very much popular. That is one of the longest wars, you know, that there are 24 bodies, and each body has a couple of the slopes associated with it, or more, and it goes up to five so It comes about 12 days, compared to those three days covered in some form. Only 16 of the 22 rods in actually cover have water in them. 13 of them have only one, two of them, three of them have two. And Rankari water is the unique one. It has three rods, it has the unique one. It has three wards. So here it is. One is by Ramatati, the other one is by and the third one is by the one and so Another thing unique about this war is that this is the only war which is not recited by Guruji. So here is a list of all the 22 wars. I'm not going to spend that much time on it, but I want to show you the list. And if you notice that on the right hand side I have abbreviated things like M to dot and four. That's Manda four. That's decided by decided by Guru Dhamasi. Manda Pen, Guru Nanak, etc. and so on. So you can also notice you know at least some of the words are you know when you look at it. Are uh, more than you know, God have more than directly you know, two, one or two, and the only one, like I said, is has three of them directly as presented under uh, 40, 15, and 16 is the Ram Kari one. So out of 31 laws, 22 uh, are more directly advocated in 16 Another thing I want you to notice 
only four of the Guruji's have come forth the box. Guru Amar Das Ji, Guru Angad Dev Ji had only slokes, he recited slokes, no box, no shouts. <laughs> Entire Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So what happened is when Guru Arjan Dev Ji compiled these wars, what he did was he took all these slopes, you know, and put them against the wars and whatever was left, he put it at the end of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji starting at the age of 1410 and whatever was left from the Mala Pesa, Mala Tita, Mala Tita, Tata, and Panima, he had to put those in there in that order. Like I said, each was at the center topic. So what I did is, I put the center topic on the right hand side, left hand side to actually show what that was. I did not actually put it for all 22 because I have to do more work in order to actually come up with that one. And I didn't have the time and I don't think it's necessary. I just wanted to point out that each was does have a central idea and it talks about a singular field in that particular war. So, Rangaji war by Bhagavan and Sata, the praises of Guru, I didn't say Guru Arjan Devi, I just said Guru. So we are talking about the Guru Jol in this particular case, I believe. So now, let's actually move on to the background part, I'll quickly go through it. Why, who, when, where, why, etc. It's a spiritual war in Sri Guru Granth Sahib on pages 9, 66 through 68. The technique of two pages. Two, two pages. Interesting point to know exactly is this war praises the Guru Jod, which is directly Guru Nanak Dev Ji's Jod, which was the pure Jod, in two pages of Sri Guru Granth Sahib. There's another place in Sri Guru Granth Sahib toward the end, if you go to page 1385, those are swayed by Guru Vati Dev Ji himself. They are exactly two pages. And they also, if you look at the context, they were pretty much saying the same thing. How great that you are, Guru Nanak Dev is. This particular war, our subject war, was Kumo composed and sung by the two brothers, Gurmata and Sata. They were the key to me in the Guru's work. But like I said, it was put to writing by Guru Bhakti Devi. And that's clear from the heading itself when you look at the word Aki, mean. It was uttered, spoken, or sung. Not enough to say that you know, they have a tradition that way. I saw Singh Ji has spent a lot of time analyzing this whole thing. And I'm, I was going to keep this one as a backup job, but I'm going to go through it quickly. There are some different kind of opinions that when it was at least sung, most of the scholars, I mean the real scholars. They do agree that it was almost a year after they were ready to be able to do the right thing. Kavi Santok Singh Ji and Gaur Pratap, Surat Prakash, very, very briefly actually summarized that this whole incident, which is signed, and it's very informative, it does not have any other additional information which can actually confuse people or where the people don't agree. Paisal Singh Ji 
what he has done is the people who have the contradicted or came with, uh, with a different kind of analysis when where it was done, he took all those objections and in a very detailed language and analysis he presents it and dug on of Sri Grand Sahaji in volume 7. And you can read on your own if you like to look at that. But the most of the confusion that comes in was actually sung during the Tika ceremony of Guru Ungadevi. Some of them were saying that one, on the Guru Ray directly, Makhalid, the Western scholar. But those people, they were not the expert of Sikh religion. He himself, had a mission when he went there and he actually consulted with some of the Gyani and they were not scholars either. So he himself is confused and he has a little some confusion on this one you know, by stating that. And by saying he again in his analysis shows why that particular thing or any other one who says you know, it was sung at first time you know, at Guru Angad Dev Ji, you know, at the Gurgati ceremony, and then other parts of the bar, because it has eight forty, they were, you know, added when other Gurus you know, were given to you know, Gurgati. That's why some of the people called it Tikka ceremony, which means, you know, at the, doing the ceremony by applying the mark on the forehead of the Gurus and giving them Gurgati. But that is not a practice. So on uh, this slide I got back up and I will leave it as back up but I want to point out a few things. I saw think he looked at it more detail, looking at it, you know, when people were saying, you know, sometimes the mind was related, uh, related to Madana Ji and they talk about Satyabhuman Ji, Sakhi itself, and Sakhi is different. Depends on whose Saki you have to talk about it. He took the you know, other circumstances where people were saying, you know, well, Guru Angad Ji could not actually give them the money. He said the economic condition until Guru Arjun Dev Ji, the Guru Karwa never running into money problem. The only time they ran into it, right after the he took the Vigati and his own brother was opposing him and he was the Lugati, and that's the only time he ran into God. So that kind of actually proved that it happened, you know, actually during Guru Ajahn Ali's time, and also the person, you know, actually who went to Guruji and took those people for pardoning, and he was a contemporary of Guru Ajahn Ali. So that's a very strong argument, you know, actually it happened during Guru Ajahn Ali. Saki, if you can read the whole thing, you know, I would uh, go to the Saki. If you can read it, you know, for a minute or so, then I'll just uh, make a few points. So, what it says is, by the way, I try to have to translate exactly what I see. So don't say he has written. So I'm not good in English, you know, so there may be some mistakes of our meaning for that one. That's my mistake. Not great coming by Santos saying he has said. But I try to get to the essence of it, which I'll stand behind. So they are talking about two people who used to have to perform the service in Guru Atilevi, the Dwar. Their daughter. So no place, you know, he says, you know, whose daughter was it, was it but one's or Sata, but most of the other people say Sata. So that kind of issue shows that Sata is in the town of came up. And they needed money, and what they actually got from the Guru Kara, it did not meet their expectation. So what happened, they refused to have to the them. So Guruji himself went 
grab them, come back and start doing the kirtan, they refused. Not only that, but they said they might be some disrespectful words about Guruka, not Guru Atanaveti himself, Guruka, which included disrespect by Guru Nanak Devi. That's when Guru Atanaveti decided to at the give the hukam to his Sangha, to all the Sikhs, that do not ask them to actually perform treatment by you anymore, and don't actually deal with them at all anymore. So they were excommunicated in essence. What happened was, right after that, they, they realized that what they have done is they have made a mistake. They had economic problems. Nobody was actually asking them to. They were socially not directly invited anymore. So I'm going to talk about all those. But then they went to a person whose name was Ayyadaji. By the way, when you look at the, the history of the Sikhism, there were titles associated with the great Sikhs, such as, you know, Pahi Sahar Gurdas Ji, Sikhi Nihad, that where the Sikhi can lead you up to that boundary, that actually belong to actually Baba Buddha Ji. So similarly, in this particular case, Pahi Lata Ji was known as a Parakkar, a benevolent person who believed in good friend, well known before this incident. So they went to him to actually come to Guruji and ask for the power of the Guruji to accompany them. Now, where did it happen? Where did it, about the uh, subject matter? Where did they say this directly uh, particular war? In the Durbar of Guruji so at that time, the Mandatam was not even built, you know, because it was built by Guru Arjun Devi, but he just took the Gurgati less than a year ago. So that's why you know, that happened. That's where I would lead you to go back the bar. That's where it happened. So why? Like I said, you know, no source of income. They were socially completely cut off, alienated, and also sickness struck them. They recognized their mistake. And then they went to Pai Dadaji, and Pai Dadaji came in and got Guruji less. By the way, I just want to point out when Pai Dadaji came in, it's not my Pai Sikhok Singh Ji, but it is written on many other places and which is very much consistent. What he did was, because it was Guru's hukum not to actually deal with them, so what he did was, he actually blackened his face and rode on a donkey and brought those people along with him to come to see Guruji. That he had committed a sin in a way that he didn't follow the magic Guruji's hukum. At the same time, since he was known as Parukkari, he wanted to have to make sure that no body should be genetically there. They should be genetically in the Guru Sangha. So they realized that he brought them there and wanted to do that. So when Guruji heard about it, Guruji went to him and personally greeted him and then washed his face and all that. And that's the story behind that. So, after they recovered something, somewhat, and then in Guru Dharmar, they sent this war again. But three points were decided by driver one, and the last three were, uh, eight, uh, five were done by the Sata. By the way, you know, word Sata and Sate, you know, is the title. I'm going to have to explain that, but they are one and the same person. Now let's, let's talk about historical uh, significances. 
in terms of historical, social dharma as well as spiritual. Historical. There are two memorials in our in Sri Lanka. One is at the time of Gurudev Pai Guru, Adityadi, when Patanjali's way is were recited in praise of Guru. Again, Guru Jyot, not directly all of them are recited in praise of Guru Adityadi. It contains starting with Guru Nanakdevi, leading all the way through other Gurus to Guru Nanakdevi. Another interesting point is I already mentioned that when you look at the Swaye, and you can see that they at least start with Guru Nanakdevi, Mukhwar Swaye, Una de Mutum Pachadegur, but he recited. And you should have been pondered on this one a little bit. Why did he do that? He didn't want them to actually praise him. When you read those and look at the meaning, that what he has done is he has praised Guru Nanak Dev in that, as he starts on that. So that's an example for the parts to actually make sure when they are reciting, they are talking about the greatness of Vahe Guru and the greatness of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Jo. The rest of it, it is just transferred to the other one. So whatever they were doing, they were doing what Guru Nanak Dev Ji would have done. Other point I wanted to make from this particular slide is that when they at least sang the Suvaye, the parts, at the Gurgati, Priti Chandinati became a rival of Guru Arjuna because he thought it was his life. He was the older brother. The Gurgati belonged to him. As the Star Bandi, what he tried to do was he tried to interrupt the ceremony so that they can give. But the Sangat restrained him. And so what happened is when he came back to Amrsal, he became a bit rival of the Guru Arjuna He went so far that since he was directly known well to all the Musans, he would still collect money from them. And when it time came time for a directly Langar Atala, he would be sending them to the Langar of Guru Arjuna and that's the only time in Guru Jayasri where the number was running short of money and they were having a the problem. And when Pai Gurdasi, he was directly at that time preaching in Kansi, you know, area. When he came back and he looked at it, what is happening? So then he and Baba Buddha he actively started going and convincing the Sangha that no here Guru is Guru Arjuna Devi and they turned around the same thing very, very shortly. The reason I am mentioning that one, that is the time you have to really, Sattva Bhagavan, both of them, they have been refused to do the peace and you know when the economic condition was bad, you have to do it. Social. So their pride, Especially people talk about the one, you know, he thought, you know, he was the greatest, you know, the bar, you know, who was singing in Guru Ji, you know, He went as far, you know, a lot of it, he told him the writer, that he was saying that due to his ability, art of, or skill of doing Kirtan, that's why Sangha was coming in to see the Guru. Otherwise, nobody was you know, caring about what Guru said. Guruji always had in the one, you know, to keep the bus, and then he used to have to do the dish after that. And he even went as far as saying that, same thing that happened during the night day the time, the people were listening to Madhana rather than directly 
what would not be if he had to say. Last man would be actually issued that order. He thought, you know, this is really the end of Lurka. So they were cut off. They suffered mental anguish as well as, you know, actually physical health went down. And just like when we did Vairas, Dukhdan, Sukhrupya, so Dukh, that suffering, really helped them come to their senses. And what happened is, they came back and got the forgiveness, which is not a their mental, generally being, state, as well as it helped them recovering from their actual disease. So, you can see that Sangat is one of the basic social needs of all human beings. And that's why even when people put in prison, etc., solitary, etc., that's the most stringent, directly, punishment, you know, when they do that. And same thing happened to these people, they were cut off socially, you know, from the Sangat completely. I'm not going to dwell on this one this evening. We are going to have a lot of information on the significance of the center. So legally, sure, their egos were in their way, you know, this led to this particular incident, but also clever maneuvering by Pithi Chan were also contributed to this, also contributed to this. What he was doing was just like the message of Usam Katsara, he was going around and trying to actually break people away from Guru Kaar and then seeking their collaboration. And no doubt, you know, that had influenced on Sata Bhavan and thought that you know, if you can have to move with, we should have no problem. But when Pahigadasi came back during that time, all of them things turned around. Nobody was listening to Pratish and then world. And so what happened is, so they went economically broke, you know, they had nothing, no place to actually come to. And so the political aspect is the political movement by, you know, pretty that. So you can see that. These kind of things were happening and he went to the rulers and tried to get their collaboration also. And then you have body else, you know, who was against Guru Ka. So he tried to to join, get them to join him, you know, to against the Guru Ka. So this has been happening to everything, you know, either they are religious institutions or as a political. And all the time, it happened during Guruji's time, it is happening today, right now, it happens. Okay. So the best thing is, we as Sangat, as sex, we got to be aware of this one, so that we can take the proper measures against them. So again, there will be another workshop, you know, we're talking about these kind of things. I think it is tomorrow evening, you know, so you will get the well engaged into that particular aspect of it. Karmic, the running is that pronounced in the past. It is considered one of the most what worst can you know, be human demands of the human being. And you can see what kind of consequence it brings. But at the same time, we also actually look at when we look at this particular incident, we can see that Guru is merciful and compassionate. He forgave the human beings. Why? Because to Guru, really Linda. To any guru, it didn't matter. Pusta, prayer, it doesn't matter to guru. To him, both are equal. Yeah. But what is the point here is that again, you know, the nida or usta when you are doing it, you are really impacting yourself. And guru's mission is to have to save from the effects of Maya, you know, whether it's on the ego getting in our way or anything else. So Guru is always the good part who has come to this and created the Again, 
que desde de los seis hasta el presidente se nos ha dado whenever somebody is, you know, he has committed something bad in the past, it should be handled and done, and it should be done realizing what happened in this particular incident. Don't try to actually tell the world that a sword so does not actually come to here. We are going to give him the strictest punishment and kick him out of the pond, etc. That's not the way of the people who are. So anybody making that decision, they cannot be the representative guru at the time they do that. So guru holds a special part, part place by the gurus in his art. So you can see when he saw the time, he can care about you know, his doubts or whatever is going to come in. He's looking at his disciple who has already accepted Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And he is actually going on the teaching of Guru Nanak Dev Ji and that's the way he is living. So when he saw that one, he sees Guru in him. So that's why to him it was an immediate pardon of those people, not something that is not pardoned by this or that. So he is looking at those people since they wanted to have the comfortable sanctuary. He gave his blessing for that. So another thing is, we do the kirtan, we hear the kirtan in the morning and guru karti all the time. That started during the Guru Arjan Dev time. Those people quit doing kirtan. Guru Arjan Dev Ji instructed his sangat and himself took the sangha and started doing kirtan. And it has become a mariyata since then that the kirtan and guru can start. That's the time of day time. Spiritual impact. I'm going to take about another five minutes or so to conclude it. Look at this particular body. Something of mine be mine. It's not their body. It's Turki body. Guruji himself, Guru Narik Dev Ji said, it's not my Bani, it's Turki Bani. How can you have to do the Turki Bani if you are an ordinary person who have done without the Guru Ka? This means once they were pardoned, they received the blessing of Guru Arjan Dev Ji. Their spiritual status has exalted very much. Now they were connected with God at that particular time and they decided that man. I will ask any one of you, you know, when you go back, read the Bani. You will actually hear Mark about it uh, over the two days. And then read, like I said, you know, what has been actually said by Guru Arjan Dev Ji in Suryas and see the level of this one, the word that said that. How closely they match what they are talking about. So it's the same one, so keep on. And the thing is, Guru Arjan Dev Ji himself put that Bani in Sri Guru Gansa. He already did that level to the same level because it was to keep on. So the point here I want to actually suppress is this one. The Guru is the one who connects you to the body. Most of us, you know, read Sukhumisar. When you look at the second study and the slow that comes by to that one, it says, Deen Duk Dat Duk Pajana Kakat Nath Nath Sarum Kumari Yayo Nanak Ke Raksa. Think about it. Reflect on it. That's why you are here. When you go back, read Sukhumisar. Pay some attention to these words. What is it saying? Guru Arjan Dev Ji is reciting this one. Hey, Vahe Guru, you are the one who takes care of you know, everybody who has no master, nobody to go to. You take care of everybody who has no. You have to try their suffering that time. Matteri Sarnaya, I came to you a second. Saying to you, God, 
पर मैं पता ही आया आई डेट नॉट कम हियर नो आई ब्रॉड नानक देव एज नॉट नानक देव बी यू नो फिजिकली ऑफ योर हैंड दिस मीन नानक देव जी की टीचिंग इज साइडिंग इन योर इन हिज हार्ट हार्ट इट इज गुरु नानक देव जी की टीचिंग वो मोल्ड इज लाइफ कार्ड इज लाइफ सो मन में जरा करिया तिथे करिए सुरत मत मन बोध जपति साहब दे वे गुरु दी चक्कर है ही है गुरु नानक देव जी की जोर गुरु नानक देव जी हिमसा इज द वन हु एक्चुअली मेक्स यू लाइक दैट वन सो दैट यू आर एक्चुअली एक्सेप्टेड बाय यू नो नॉट द वन दैट यू कैन नॉट बी एक्सेप्टेड ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ फ्रॉम सिकिट पॉइंट ऑफ रिलीजन मे हैव देयर ओन वे ऑफ रीचिंग गॉड but that's the only way for the six to do that in conclusion directly i want to just say few more words here and then we'll go guru is merciful compassionate and forgiving and we should not forget that guru is the link between a person and god nothing else why do i say this so it's a very simple mark because Why Guru is unapproachable? He is way above us. We cannot actually reach him. It says in Gurwani, Allah Allah Adam Kadir Karanhar Kini. So what we are talking about is Allah. Hey God, you cannot actually say much about him. You cannot actually look at him. You cannot tell him how he is. He is a gone. It which cannot be approached. We cannot actually reach him. He is out of our reach. So we can actually say that I did prayer, I did several, I did that, I do that. You can do all those. I it does nothing more than you actually feed your, feed your ego. It's not going to actually take you to Wahid Guru Sahib. A gum. He is a gum. Only person, only way to reach him is through Guru. Next slide says. Why Guru is approachable to Guru? So Guru can approach him. Guru can reach him. So more gum gyan batavate. So your Guru hai ka gum da mat a gum ada lagaya mean unapproachable. Gum mean approachable. Kis tarah pounch ho jaani? Gum is born. Guru di gyan de rahi. Why Guru kai? गो नारी के प्रसाद सो वी हैव टू एक्ट इन द ट्रूथ इन आवर टुगेदर सो व्हाई हैव टू गो टू द ट्रूथ टीचिंग इट टेल्स यू टू लिव अ ट्रूथफुल लाइफ एंड बिकम विचुअस वंस यू कम विचुअस व्हाट हैपन इज दैट वाहे गुरु यू हैव प्लीज योर ओन गुरु वंस यू प्लीज गुरु एंड गुरु टेक्स यू देयर द मीन But he has done it. He has provided everything, and God is all knowing. So, with all the virtues you have acquired through Guru Ji's teaching, then next line says, "Ye gun ho hai, ganchriya milega so, and God Himself to that day, just to that day, makes union with you. You and God become one." So, Guru Ji grace will get you. You cannot. Please, God, and you cannot actually be selfish. I want you to let me just some of you say this one, and then stop there. You do that, please. You know what I mean. You say, "Karmi aave kapda, nadi mo tuva." Karmi aave kapda, lar of sweet of the oh, the di chage kam ki the taai body mein. So what happened? First time, how did you get that one? Where did you get the karm? Because karm you can only learn the roti or through human body. That's not it. It means that karmi are kapra. 
ਕਰਮੀ ਵੀਰ ਗੁਰੂ ਦੀ ਪਾਸ ਥਰੂ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਗੈਟ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਐਟ ਵਿਚ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਗੈਟ ਅ ਪ੍ਰੇਮ ਇਨ ਯੂ ਫਾਰ ਦ ਗਾਡ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਂਸ ਯੂ ਟੂ ਵਾਸ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੇਮ ਬਟ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਐਟ ਮੀ ਬੀ ਕਮ ਵਨ ਵਿਦ ਗਾਡ ਬਟ ਓਨ ਇਟ ਥਿੰਗ ਹੈਪਨ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਮੰਜੂਰ ਆ ਕਿ ਵਿਚੂਅਲ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਲਵ ਦੈਟ ਟੂ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਫਾਰ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਗਾਡ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਹੈਵਨ ਇਜ਼ ਨਦਰ ਇਟਸੈਲਫ ਐਟ ਮੀ ਇਟਸ ਆਲ ਯੂ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਸੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਸ਼ਰ